3130, Lot Hawkins on page 151. Hello, Ms. Hawkins, and welcome. Um, good, you've taken yourself off mute. Yes, sorry about that. There we oh, are. No, no, perfect. That's fine. Thank you very much for, for waiting so patiently. Um, so we've read your submission, and thank you for that. Uh, next 10 minutes is, is um, all yours to tell us what, you, what the highlights are of what you want us to look at. Thank you. Perfect. First of all, good afternoon, and thank you so much for listening to us. Really appreciate it. Um, I think I've got three main objections. If you look, if you read my thing, I think yes, the main the first, my first objection is with this proposed bylaw. I almost feel that um, council is looking at us responsible dog owners, so very clearly responsible dog owners, as almost as if we're children, as if we are criminals and we're doing things wrong. There is a whole lot of us who are really responsible dog owners who look after our dogs, who look well after our dogs, who look after the community picking up poops as we walk along from other dogs that might not have done it and sometimes you miss things and that's fine so what I would really love to see is for council to really start seeing the rate payers as adults and say like how can we work together with this how can we you know not punish not put a punishment but put positive reinforcement through um, and if you look at the positive reinforcement the last two years or three years actually have been pretty darn hard on all of us as a community I'm currently at home with COVID so hence, you know, hence my croaky voice. Um, but it's been tough. And I'm in a very lucky position that I have got the space around me to do this. And I live in a beautiful part of this world and, and not crammed in a city apartment. But still having a dog increases mental health and mental well-being, not just that, but it also increases the physical health of people. So we talk about all these things that are good for people to do. And yes, we're doing them. But by putting this bylaw in, we're starting to say, well, actually, you're going to put that into little streams. They're like, oh, you can only do this. You can only do that. That's just not going to work. So just by saying you can only exercise your dog in this way and in that way, we know dogs need 60 minutes of exercise each day, each day. And that means not just walking on a leash. The last time we walked people on a leash, it was called slavery. I mean, sorry, a dog is still a dog. They still need to be able to go freely and to play and interact with other dogs. Also, and not most, and actually most importantly, to socialize. Dogs are social animals and we want them to be able to work with other dogs and with other people. Now, as responsible dog owners, you know, I do take it that when I go past the park, I will leash up my dog because I don't want my dog to go running to a, a kid's playground or whatever have you. But if there is a big park with an open space and there's no one around, I will let my dog off. And I think that's just the way it is. And if you look at what um, typo, what is it, TDC, TD, TCDC are doing um, in Fongwata, for example, you've got the beach free in the morning, which is a lovely open area, a great playground for people and dogs alike. In the morning, it's, it belongs to the people who walk and the people with the dogs, and the dogs can swim and they can run till nine o'clock in the morning. And then after that time, it's for everyone else. Now, that is a perfect, perfect solution, I find, to work with the residential parks that are around us. So we are in Tamahiri, and we've got a great park by the school, which is an amazing park to walk. It's an amazing park for kids to play. There is an amazing skate ramp for other kids, for the older kids to go and play and hang out as well. And I love everything that's been done there. But why can't we just do something like that? Why can't we say, from six to nine in the morning, Walk your dogs after that time, you walk your dogs, but on the leash. And if there is sports being played, which there is being played on weekend, just don't walk your dogs. It's come use a common sense approach. Do not try and make it go like you're doing this wrong, you're doing this wrong. Because the whole joy of dog having dogs and it's a feel good factor of having a dog and the positive effects it has got on society and on people actually has been completely negated in that sense. So, on that sense as well, the areas. Um, that you've proposed in Tamahiri, both the Tiawa Reserve, which is too small and it's riddled with, um, you can't even go down the banks, the river banks at the moment at all. Um, 
and the little tiny field by the reserve, Tamahere Reserve as well, they are too small for big dogs. So big dogs need way more space. That, that area that you propose at the, at the, by the school reserve, it's great if you've got a small dog or if you've got an anxious dog and you still want to be able to walk around, but not with big dogs. And I've got, my dog is not overly big at all. It's a medium sized dog, but it's too, it's too big. It needs way more space than it would have there. And it would just, what it does do, which I noticed with dogs, the moment you try to decrease the space that they actually need, they get anxious and they will turn aggressive. And I don't want that for my dog. I want my dog to be lovely, placid, friendly, natured dog who's just really keen and curious to interact. That's what I want. Um, anyway, sorry, I think I've been rambling a bit. Must be my COVID brain going a bit mad on me. Um, so those are basically the main three objections that I've got. So I was just, yeah. Sorry, I think you're on mute, Jan. I am muted, yes. Um, I am sorry to hear about your COVID. Um, That's all right. It's getting it. better. Um, but uh, yes, I know about COVID brain. Look, um, you, your submission is very, very clear. Your comments are, are very clear and to the point. Um, I don't see anybody needing any points of clarification. Um, so if if you're comfortable that you've you've told us all you want us to hear, um, then then we're done. Yeah, no, I think I am clear. I just want to know what is what's the process from here. Sorry, that's probably where I'm going. Like, you know, we do this. I know that you're listening to these three days. So, when are decisions being taken? How do we know what what's going to happen after this? So the process from here is that uh, all of the submissions, all of the submission points. Uh, and the points that have been made, both written and verbally, uh, will all be grouped together in the appropriate place of places. Uh, that will that will form a deliberations report that we will see and that you will see uh, online on the council site in okay. you know in a few weeks. Uh, I mean, obviously, collating that this many submissions is, and pulling the points out is is a large job. Uh, from that, uh, we then uh, read those read the de deliberations report. And we start our deliberations point by point uh, with everybody having some input. Um, not a quick job. And uh, I don't think it's to be done for the next um, number of weeks. Uh, yeah. so that, that's, that's the way the process works. So in your making your submission and making your verbal submission have been very, very helpful. Good. Okay. Now, I appreciate that. And uh, yeah, what I would really say is, Treat us as adults and, and let's walk this together. Dogs are part of our society. We, we want to be part of it all. And I think if we just walk hand in hand, it, it goes a lot easier. And, you know, don't, don't try and blame a lot of the things on seven people that, you know, you've got the means to control them, control them all that you must and all you should do, but don't do it on the responsible dog owners. And I think that's my main, my main point. Lovely. Well, thank you very much. Okay, um, thank you. Go rest your throat. You will do. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you. Ms. Clark. Uh, up next, we have Samara 2701, Hearing Dogs for Deaf People New Zealand on page 269. And we have how long for this? 15 minutes? Uh, yes, I think, believe so. Yeah, okay, thank you. Um, hello, um, Roger, you're just coming up as Roger D. I'm sorry, I don't know your last name, but um, we are here. And if you want to take yourself off mute, um, we'd love to hear from you. Ah, that's great. It looks like you've um, unmuted yourself. Thank you. Um, we've read your submission. You've got um, about 15 minutes to give us your main points that you want us to understand. Thank you.
Roger, are you ready to start now? Can't hear him. I'm sorry, I can't hear you. I think um, I'm not sure that your microphone is working. Perhaps if you could just give us a couple of uh, test words. No, you. Ah, that's better. You've unmuted yourself. Um, if you are ready to start, can you let us know? Uh, I'm sorry, we're still not. We're still not getting any any audio coming through. Ms. Clark, are you able to assist here? Uh, we have sent him a message. Okay. Um, explaining that. Okay. We have no audio. Thank you. <clears throat> so I wonder if we just um just be a little patient here. Roger, can you hear us? Um, Matt, could I suggest that you um, resolve these issues in the waiting room, please? Okay. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Clark, can we move to the uh, next submitter, please, while we resolve those issues? Yep. Um, next speaker is 3122, Heather Westerby Jones on page 155. Thank you very much. Hi, Ms. Westerby Jones. If you could take yourself off mute, that would be helpful. Thank you. Um, I'm just checking that you're all connected up. Yep. I've lost her off my screen. Um, yeah, we've lost you too. Uh, um. Matt, can we just can we stop the um, recording for a moment while we sort this technical issue out? Oh, we're just we're just letting um, Heather back in now. Oh, so hopefully, okay. if it's if it's working this time. Oh, here we go. Right, I think... Um, Hello, can you hear I, me now? We can hear you now. Welcome, Ms. Westerby oh, Jones. Thank um, you. Thank you. Your, your camera's showing... No, oh, we can see you. Oh, um, sorry, I'm sorry, I've got no, too no, much light. fine. We've, let, let's not mess with the technology. Um, we've got you there. We can see you. Uh, we can hear you. Uh, we have also got your submission. Um, as I've said to everybody, we have read all the submissions. We've read your one. Um, and thank you for that. Uh, and we'd love to hear what you see as the highlights of it. Um, if you could just uh, give us those over the next 10 minutes, that would be great. Thank you. Thank you. Well, the ones I have chosen was education, um, recreation planning for families, um, and Tikofai Park. Um, I'll start with 
Te Kowhai Park. It's the only exercise area for free running our dogs um, for the whole of Te Kowhai area. We now have two new subdivisions here too. So that is adding more people down here at the park. Um, we can't go up to Te Kowhai, to Horatu Park unless you've got a vehicle because um, you couldn't bike up there because there's too many trucks on the road. The park is actually dangerous, that park, um, because the people who use that park, um, they either have unsocial dogs and when you go, they say, my dog's not social and they shut you out until they have finished with the park. Um, or alternatively, they free run their dogs. And so you can't go in and play a game with your dog because if their dogs come over and you say, um, you know, can you get your dogs? They say, hey, it's a free run area. So that, so that the Tikofi Park is the only one um, for us here, which means we have no area. And um, dogs are going to be stopped from using Tikofi Park for one sports day a week. So if Saturday they use this dog, they use the ground for sports, the rest of the time, the park's not being used when dogs could use it. And um, that's a waste of a, a facility, really. Um, and it's valuable for training. And how it's valuable for training is you train your dog in your own backyard and you like train a retrieve and you get it to a good stage. And then you go and you take your dog down to the park and you go to a quiet area, but you've got more space and you get um, and you move and move closer to more busy areas. And um, until you've got your dog still concentrating on you in a busy area. And that's, that's how you go about your training. And you need a place that's nearby so that you can go on a regular basis to do that. Um, and that. And how I use the park is I go around the perimeter of the park with my dog. I then do activities. I train up the middle. I run up the middle of the park. I might drop a cloth and send my dog back and I might, or I might send it ahead and stop it and call it over to me. Or I actually go to this skate bowl and I use that area. Nobody's there. I use it to back my dog up the curve, to get it to go on the ramp and play bow or to jump on the dome or do a few twists. And that's getting my dog to listen to me a lot and respond to me. Um, and that can, can then be put to a routine to music and enter a Dogs New Zealand competition called Dancing with Dogs. Now to the poo on the park. It's disgusting that people leave poo on the park, but there's not a lot of poo on the park because I'm down there nearly every single day. And I can say that what, whatever poo is on that park is done by a handful of owners or five or six dogs there is not a lot of poo on that park. And I can go a week or two weeks when I don't see any, when I'm going right around the park and up through the middle and over to the skate bowl. So it's, it's only a few people. And what are we going to do about a few people? Well, when you're catching fish, we, they, there's laws and they have guardians who check in the sack that you've got the right size or the right quantity of fish. The same with duck shooting season. There's laws about that, and they have guardians who go out and see the duck shooters. So could we have some guardians of the park, people who can observe the park, who maybe live nearby, who could report back to the animal control people that they see a blue car come frequently and that they don't pick it up, or take a photo or put up some cameras, or even involve the police. They have observation skills. They may see things in their travels around. It's liaising with people and trying to find out because it is only a few people that are doing this. Because if I was running over poo every single day at that park, I'd be saying something too. Um, maybe the officers could work shift work in summer and in the cool of the evening or the early morning, um, when people are out with their dogs, they could be looking around then. Or maybe we could do surveys of all the dog owners and find out what they do with their dogs, um, where they go, what locations, what times they're out, to see if we could find some solution to it. That, that's about the park. And 
when we're planning, we've got to look at what families are. Families these days are adults and dogs, adults and children and dogs. And we're going to be expected to use public transport more and bikes and things like that before the environment. Therefore, we've got to have our dogs trained to go on buses and trains and things. Well, Dogs New Zealand has a good qualification called Canine Good Citizen, which is appropriate just for that. That's what it's for. Um, it's in four stages. And people are expected to do physical activities and a written test. And it covers behaviour, bylaws, and, and um, caring for the dog. All the things that we are, that, and it can be measured because it's actually a qualification and a test. And that qualification and test, people who do buddy reading and go into rest homes before they find their dogs are appropriate, they've done those tests. Um, and we, and I would like to see more sharing. Years ago, there was at conferences of dog control and SPCA and other organisations. You had presenters presenting shared parks, um, and we should dogs should be able to share the parks with other people and activities. M Trentham Memorial Park is one in Wellington that's um, fabulous at that, and I've never seen dogs running out into the cricket or running out into the other activities, the volleyball, or across the play area. And their child play area is really well is really quite open. Um, so that, and on, uh, and I would like to see education, that would be solving most of our problems. If the people were educated and dogs were trained, we wouldn't have very few of the problems that we have today with dogs. Those are the two key points, is the training and the education. Because we take dogs who are in a, a different language and environment, we put them into a human environment, and we expect them to be able to do our language and, and our manners. And, and that's what it got. And I wanted to speak about Dogs New Zealand. Yesterday, I heard councillors talking as though it was a nothing sort of organisation. But actually, the most of the members in Dogs New Zealand are sports people who compete with activities such as agility, obedience, radio, nose work, tracking, dancing with dogs, and as you heard, field trials. The breeding people are just a minor group of the people, members of that organization. But a lot of work is done in that too. They have a, breeders have a code of ethics they have to ad adhere to. There's also a scheme, a quality assurance scheme for breeders too. And they also have listed on their website, a list of the, all the breeds and the ailments they're prone to. So if you're going to breed your dog, you should health test for all those ailments before you actually even breed your dog. And we heard of a person yesterday talk about the ailments that he ended up in a whole litter. Well, if you test before you actually breed, maybe you don't end up with all those ailments. And I would like to see more involvement maybe with animal control with, with Dogs New Zealand. They have a a whole range of information that can be of use to them. Um, so do the clubs. I think a lot more liaising to gather all the knowledge and activities that are around there that can be of use that's already there. Um, so that is what I feel about the whole. But I really feel that in, by stopping um, Te Kofi Park, for just a handful of people that are causing this problem means that we can't socialise our dogs appropriately. Um, thank you, Ms. Westerby-Jones. We, we only have uh, 30 seconds left. Um, That's fine. I'll I finish. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, and I don't believe there are any questions for you, but um, I do applaud you for, um, within that, coming up with some suggestions and solutions and those sort of things are very helpful to us as we move forward into a deliberation uh, stage. I also, uh, just another thing I have, I believe that you still have on your staff, someone who ran um, animal control department, a really good animal control department many years ago. And I understand that she's still on the staff. Her name is um, uh, Cheryl Paikau. 
Um, and maybe she could help with some of the solutions as well. Thank you for that. Thank you. That's really helpful. Thank you. Um, and look, thank you for putting in your submission and, come, and taking the time to come. Thank you. Thank You're you. welcome. Ms. Clark, did we resolve um, Roger's problem? Yes, we do. Um, next speaker is hearing uh, submitter 2701, Hearing Dogs for Deaf People New Zealand, page 269. Thank you. Hello, Roger. Um, I'm not sure that what I'm seeing there, but um, can you hear us now? Hello, how are you? Perfect. Um, you just seem to have a dog on your screen, but um, that's that's perfectly fine. Yes, that's um, Harper, the service dog, the hearing dog for the deaf people of New Zealand. Lovely. I'm the spokesperson also, the spokesperson for civil defence right through New Zealand um, in the case of an emergency. Oh, great, great. Yeah. Well, thank you for your submission. Um, that was, it was, it's really helpful to get another perspective. Um, and I noticed your attachments as well. Now we've read them all, but it would be um, really good if you can take some time, um, you know, 10, 10, 15 minutes, perhaps, and just tell us uh, what the highlights are you want us to bring to top of mind. Yes. Um, okay. On um, the question times where I've uh, put it under questions, I've, I've highlighted it. Um, the, the major concerns in the CBD um, around shops and that is um, allowing pet dogs in, in that area. They're not covered under the Health Act under uh, 1956 under Section 120, where service dogs are. Where it's a high proportion of service dogs that have been attacked in the CBD, it's really high. 2019 was the highest in New Zealand, was nine service dogs being attacked. In 2020, there has been one service dog being killed by a little wee foxy in the CBD. Um, Last year, there was a service dog had its ear bitten in the CBD for going into a cafe. I also been attacked myself three times in the CBD because um, people didn't want uh, people want their dogs in the CBD and not thinking about under the Health Act and also the WorkSafe that um, service dogs have been attacked in the CBD. Um, it's getting more and more service dogs out there in the community. Uh, there are seven organisations. Um, under the Dog Patrol Act, under Section 2, it states this is of the service dogs and 75 of the Dog Patrol Act that we are allowed to go into any public places, shops, malls and etc. cetera, um, public transports. Um, Considering the wording of exceptions to identifications of certified um, organisations. Some council are forcing us to, we had to um, contact them before we can come into their district. We must report to the council first before we can go into the shops. Oh, I think that is totally wrong. We are under the organisation and under Section 2 and 75. Our Labour, Naya Manotu, the attorney says we do not need to have that, and she's given that to me in writing. Mm -hmm. um, the businesses are accepting um, pet dogs to go into their cafes and, and eat outside. Well, um, quite a few of us with service dogs and that are getting bullied and intimidation by some of the owners 
not by the dogs, but by the owners of our dogs going inside the restaurants, cafes, um, shopping, and that sort of stuff there, it's getting quite high of intimidation. So I need to make the council aware of this, what's happening with about service dogs in, the, in our district. Um, some of them are tying their dogs up in the CBD on ropes, so the dogs are barking at our service dogs. That is coming more and more alarming. The pet dogs are actually going to the toilet in the CBD. It's getting quite high around New Zealand. The, um, and people just in the businesses do not understand the safety of and the jeopardy of the service dogs, which has been attacked and putting our service dogs at risk. There are a lot of money in training, training them and we're not getting any government funding. We um, also, the, our dogs are also tra trained to go to the toilet before we go out into, um, into public. So um, under the um, mental health and the service dogs being attacked and the persons who's been attacked, like myself, I've known that firsthand what it's, what it's like. Now, the other thing that you also got is about um, educating um, businesses, schools, children, especially, and other places about safety of, of dogs. Great. I'm pleased to see that you are doing that. Um, but also businesses and different areas needs to be educated about service dogs, what happens with service dogs, how can they help us with the service dogs. Um, even when the um, like couriers and um, other people come knocking on your door, uh, businesses, they are the most worst one for kicking PPT, transport, is the worst one for kicking service dogs around New Zealand. And the training needs, uh, the, the PPT um, attorney says it's in our policy to kick any dog, doesn't matter if it's service dogs or not. So that's from PPT couriers. Um, and that, that is so wrong. So they're actually causing um, dogs to attack them because of the attitude what they're trying to doing with, with dogs out here in the community. That is done to get too high. My dog's been attacked quite a few other things here. I've added that into my report I've sent to you. Um, so, yeah, the, as the, getting the awareness around the safety, safety and the training what to do, and especially businesses um, going onto private properties or when they're out in town. Um, some companies are more aggressive towards dogs because then they can go to the council and say, oh, this dog's done X, Y, Z, when it actually hasn't. Um, like myself, that has happened. Um, and quite a few other uh, people. Now, the other one is the, the question of impound, year 5.6. Now, after Christchurch earthquake, there was quite a few service dogs who have been impounded. And I understand one of them actually got put down by mistake. And this is where our civil defense tags come in, came in from there, and it was great. Um, our service dogs, it could be during looking for help for especially people who have epilepsy, people who are blind, uh, mobility. Also, um, the dog uh, control officers think they might be wandering when they could be looking for help. So if they can try and note that down in their files with, with about service dogs, because they'll be registered on your database, if they can go and see if that person is all right, um, it is. It has happened around New Zealand. Um, 
and that's also happened in Gisborne flooding situation as well as Auckland and also the Christchurch earthquake. So, Marcus, just, can I ask you a question here, if you wouldn't mind? Yes, ma'am. Um, are you saying that uh, you're asking the council to ban dogs in the CBD area yes. because of the incidents of um, attacks on service dogs? Um, I think I've understood you correctly with that. I, would you say that also there's a lack of knowledge on the part of um, shop owners about what are service dogs and where they're allowed to go? I, I noticed you referred to that a couple of times in your submission, but that yes. would be something that the individual organisations would take up to. That's not really a council thing, that part, I don't believe. That's something that the individual organisations would take up. Is that correct? There are a lot of businesses with lack of understanding, yes. There's also some dog control officers in New Zealand is also lack of understanding. I've been asked by dog control in 2013 and 16 to leave the warehouse and that because I have a service dog and because I was a male. I've also been asked to leave um, the base um, and refused entry to go on public transport, where I took it up with regional council and also the bus company itself. And it, it's still ongoing situation on, on that case um, where service dogs, because I've gone in and uh, said to them, I'll come and do the training so you guys get a better of understanding of the seven types of organisations out there in New Zealand. I'm prepared to come to your town to do the training and to teach. None of them has taken up the, any of the offer. Um, the basis on their final warning for refusing service dogs in that area um, by government, that's how high it's gone to. Um, Louise Upston, the MP, also helping me as well um, about... Um, service dogs been attacked and also been refused entry in different areas. Thank you. So, uh, so that, that's very helpful. So, so what you're saying is that the organisations themselves, not necessarily the council, needs to um, make sure the shop owners know that, that's, that you're agreeing with that, that it's, that, that it's, it's not necessarily a council job to liaise with the shop owners, or do you see that that is, that that is a council is that something you're wanting the council to consider? If the council needs to put like literally flyers out to businesses, like some other council are doing, um, like Auckland and Tokara, um, Taupo, and um, the civil defence team is now putting out the about the um, what happens with with service dogs out there. Um, I'm working very closely with him on on that there. Um, there has oh, so that's, been that's, there that's has been a helpful. place where Thank I've been you. refused entry in Hamilton yep. Council. I've been asked to leave Hamilton Council's um, area and also Cambridge. Right. Um, and then they realised afterwards they've made a mistake. So, well, thank you. For, look, and I'm sorry to hear that, but um, thank you very much for your submission. I don't believe there's any questions for you. I think you've made the points that you want to make, and I think you've made them very clearly. Uh, and also... Um, you've brought in a new dimension here. Um, just a very quick question, Councillor Church. Yeah, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, Roger, um, have you put in two submissions? Because I'm seeing one from uh, uh, Roger Drower. Yes. On, page, on our page 670 as well, as our page 269. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Just... I'll, I'll send that in separately to council of what's been happening with the rundown of what's been happening in New Zealand um, mm -hmm. and also with the pictures as, as well that you would have seen on that second um, bit of piece of paper there right. um, of service dogs being attacked and how many service dogs being attacked and what's actually happening in our community. So you guys are well aware this does happen in all around New Zealand and is educating
different people and council to let them know this does happen. Yes, well, thank, thank you, you, thank you, Roger. That's that's um, that's a, a really good uh, summation as well. Thank you very much for taking the time to do the submissions, and uh, thank you also for persevering and and overcoming the technological hurdles that we had. Um, thank you. Have a good afternoon. Thank you very much, councillors. Be safe and mm -hmm. look after yourself during our COVID times. Thank you very much. You too. Okay. Bye bye. Bye. Ms. Clark. Uh, up next is Samita 3249 Tamahiri Community Committee on page 80. Good afternoon, Ms. Robertson. Good afternoon. You're getting to be an old hand at the Zoom stuff now. Thank you very much for joining us. Uh, thank you for your submission on behalf of the Tamahiri Community Committee. Uh, the next 10 minutes, all yours to um, give us the highlights. Thank you very much. Um, primarily, the Tamahiri Community Committee submission is to make sure that there is some off-leash dog park in our area. And we we started being concerned about this before this policy came up for renewal. So therefore we'd had a bit of consultation with the people around our district. And this was something that everybody, especially dog owners feel quite strongly about. So when we started working with the dog control team, initially they were wanting to take the previous Tiawa uh, road park out of, existence because it's got serious problems which we all know about and we won't go into at the moment regarding erosion. Um, we determined that there's still very much a requirement in our area for people to have an of flash park and therefore set about trying to um, convince the council staff that we should find another area that's suitable. Um, the results of the policy that's been up for um, consultation recently were that there's two, two places that are still being talked about, that being the old Tiawa Park by the playground, and secondly, a new spot by the Tamahiri Community Centre, where currently um, it's used occasionally as a car park, but previously there's been a big mound of dirt there. Um, our community committee has decided to say that the park the place by the hall would be the first priority. Um, we'd, we'd really like to still have the Tiawa one if we could have it fenced from the playground because other rules in the dog control policy say that um, dogs shouldn't be within so many metres of a children's playground. So if in a perfect world, it would be great if we could have two areas. Um, if we can't, then probably the one nearest the hall is the most central and would cause the least issue. There's car parking there. But once again, it would have to be fenced because it's adjacent to our sports fields, which the dog control policy specifically is aiming to keep dogs away from. The other thing, the other location in our district that we bought up initially was over the, the expressway off Taufari Road, where Wood, opposite Woodcock Road intersection. And that used to, that's um, just a little bit higher up on the edge of the Tamahiri Reserve. That area used to house a truck wash for regal transport. And it's quite an area of land that would be suitable for a dog exercise area. There's also parking space too. Um, but council staff comments were that that would be too big and too expensive to fence for that purpose. However, we wonder if they've thought about fencing only a smaller area in that same location and therefore it not costing more than an area by the hall. So really, um, I guess we're just putting up some more thinking points before those final decisions are made by you people. But generally, Tamahiri definitely doesn't want to miss out on having some off-leash run area. It's important to a lot of our residents and we haven't got into the other areas that I know a lot of people will be concerned about, 
um, in terms of the number of dogs per property and that sort of thing. We're sure that there's people that know a lot more about that than us. Um, the other thing that people have said in, in our area is that we they believe that it's very important for dogs to be socialised. And even though we have a um, minimum of 5,000 square metre blocks, um, generally that doesn't provide the ideal socialisation for the animals. And many people are now using our walking and cycling tracks to um, get around and to keep fit. And they like the idea that the, the dogs can run along on lead um, on those tracks, but obviously have a place to congregate or to go to where it can be used for training the animals as well. So that's it from me. Have you got any questions? We do indeed have questions. Um, and just before I go to Councillor Smith, um, just a comment that I do know that um, dog, dog exercise areas and hall um, overflow car parking can work very well uh, together. So they seem to be made for each other at times. Councillor Smith. Yeah, thank you uh, once again, Sue, for your um, submission. Uh, earlier, uh, Phil Lang uh, presented to this uh, hearing uh, and he supported the uh, park uh, next to the hall, um, next to uh, Lake John West property, I, I believe. Um, I suggested that it could actually be bigger in there and go right across to the hall, um, utilising that big oak tree, I think it is, uh, or big tree there. What, what uh, would your thoughts and the committee's thoughts be on actually being bigger in that area? Uh, and do you see any reasons why it couldn't be? Well, I wouldn't like to see it take up that whole space because that is actually the eastern entrance to our sports field and recreation area. Um, there's also access along this, that side of the hall to a parking space behind it. And um, certainly when, when you say bigger, um, yes, it needs to be a good size, but it's like how big is big? So I'm, I'm a bit hesitant to say, yes, make it huge, because there are we'd need to meet on site and talk about that. Um, so you wouldn't be adverse to being a little bit bigger as opposed to the entire area? I wouldn't like it to be the entire area. No. Yeah. But um, in terms of the size, definitely um, it could be a decent size. And... A lot of that area is over the, um, the new effluent field for the hall that was constructed last year and therefore um, not really suitable for other things. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other questions? Um, it, it would appear not. Um, so, again, thank you. You're a very active community. Thank you very much for, for um, putting your submission and taking the time to come and talk about it. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks Good very time. much. Bye. Ms. Clark, I think that brings us to the end of this uh, segment. Is that correct? Yes. We do have the next submitter in the waiting room, though. That would be who? Uh, Keith Sherrick. Look, rather than make him wait for um, quite a long time, um, I'm happy to take him now and then have our break after him. Okay. Thank you. So up next is submitter 3101, Keith and Carmen Sherrick on page 164. Mr. Sherrick, good afternoon. Uh, good afternoon. Hello. We thought rather than leaving, leaving you sitting around for the next 20 minutes, we would um, bring you forward um, and take our break after you. So we've got your submission, we've um, read it, and um, we'd just love to hear the, your, your highlights um, in the next 10 minutes. Thank you. Well, thank you. I'm going to do this as a PowerPoint, so I'll get sharing the screen on. Yep. So um, now I need to do the PowerPoint. Do we've got it there now? Yep. Are you seeing the full screen now? 
yes, uh, yes. We should should be the title slide. Uh, we've gone just past the title slide, but um, you're up to Tiawa Reserve should remain a well-used community recreation reserve. So I think that's your second slide. Uh, no, it isn't, oh. funnily enough. Oh, okay. That's the title. Um, okay, we'll crack on then. Good. Uh, good afternoon. I'm Keith Sherrick. Uh, thanks very much for this opportunity to speak to you. My wife, Carmen, and I have enjoyed living right next door to Tiawa Reserve for the past 27 years. And we've seen it transformed from a bare paddock into a well-used and valued community recreation reserve and playground. We are strongly opposed to it becoming a fenced off dedicated dog exercise area, despite being dog owners ourselves. We are convinced that the southeast corner of Tamahiri Park is far more suitable for this purpose for reasons that I would like to now present to you this eight-minute presentation will support and supplement our written submission. I'll happily answer questions on both at the end. Here we see option one, Tiawa Reserve, looking diagonally right across it towards the southeast corner. It is smaller than indicated by the incorrect scale at the bottom of map 29 supplied by council, offering a maximum of 80 by 50 metres of grassy area within the perimeter of trees. There are two adjoining houses and two others opposite across the narrow road. Our living room is just eight metres from the southern boundary. Our boundary fences are not dog proof and there are no fences at all on the other two longer boundaries. A steep bank and a well-used path down to the river with a picnic table at the top are on the western boundary. There is a playground in the distance here on the southeast corner and a small sealed, uh, un sorry, sorry, unsealed car park for four to five cars in the northeast corner just to the left out of picture. These last two features merit further discussion. The playground is 20 years old, clean, safe, very well maintained. It's well used by young families from a wide area. For example, on anniversary day a couple of weeks ago, I chatted with five separate families who I'd noticed using the playground, asking them where they were from. They ranged from Martingi, Oakley Lane, Pinkaro Road, Tiawa Lane and Divine Road. More recently, I noticed this playgroup from Taufori and Martingi who stayed a couple of hours. They said they prefer this playground over Tamahiri Park and Martingi playgrounds because it offers shade, is more peaceful, and has a better range of swings, and its bark chip base is cooler than rubber matting. A hidden gem was one memorable descriptor. They were all distressed to hear from me that council is considering closing it, and wondered why only dog owners and not the general public have been consulted. Tiawa Reserve is served by one small gravel car park holding about four to five cars. That's where I've got my arrow in the picture here. Uh, sandwiched between two blind 90 degree bends in the road. Children need to walk the full length of the reserve from it to get to the playground. It is sometimes full due to current uses of the reserve. Overflow often park unsafely on the verges. A widely advertised dog exercise park would require much more off-street parking, which would eat into an already smaller than optimal grassy area. Tiawa Reserve has many other uses, such as social cricket combined with large group picnics. There are more frequent smaller family and playgroup picnics, frisbee throwing, kite flying, along with other fun and games, and even fireworks occasionally. It is also used for strolling, exercise, and horse and dog walking. Access to the riverbank for swimming, fishing, walking, wedding photos, and dog off-leash exercise involves firstly crossing the full width of the reserve to reach the park entrance. Here you can see my, my wife Carmen sitting at the picnic table I hope you can see, in my picture it's obscured, but uh, no, you can see it good. Yeah, uh, near the entrance to the river, 
river path nearby, mm. as do many contemplating the likely fate of this tree, which was partly uprooted by the recent cyclone. Fortunately, there is a second option being considered. The proposed area in the southeast corner of Tamahiri Park, as marked on the council supplied map 30, extends 60 metres along the fence line on the southeastern boundary, presumably up to the concrete path, which is not shown in, on map 30, uh, which is a bit, and then from that out about 30 metres to where Carmen is sitting. 60 by 30 metres, as proposed, seems a bit small for a dog exercise area, but there appear to be ample expansion options, which I've shown here, that would make it cover the entire area shown in this, in this picture. There's just one adjacent house, well protected by the high dog-proof fence on the southeastern boundary. This park is centrally located in Tamahiri, also easily accessed from Matangi and Taufori, and is well connected by roads and paths. Looking to the left from under that same tree, there is a sealed car park with 22 marked spaces well off the road. It offers space to turn in, so there's no need to reverse out into the traffic and excellent visibility at the exit well away from the corner. Typically, it is almost empty since other car parks serve the hall, school, sports fields, and playground. There are no obvious other uses for the southeastern corner of Tamahiri Park proposed as the dog exercise area. The children's playground is at least 400 metres away, barely visible in the distance here on the other side of this very large park. It is served by a separate car park, so safety of children using it would not be compromised. Inter intervening sports fields would not be encroached upon. Shady trees for picnicking and barbecuing facilities are supplied on the opposite side of the park, well away from the proposed dog exercise area. Thus it would become a useful additional feature in this popular hub, rather than preventing most other current and valued functions as it would at the much smaller Tiawa Reserve. In this summary slide, on the left, I've listed the most important criteria that a site must satisfy to be suitable to be made into a dog exercise area. These have all been discussed in the preceding slides, but I should re-emphasize the first two, which are critical. Firstly, the site should be available without sacrifice of a playground and or other valued recreational functions. Secondly, it needs sufficient safe off-street parking. Te Awa Reserve satisfies neither of these, nor any of the other important criteria listed here. It is a treasured community asset, with many current uses that would be incompatible with the proposed fully fenced dog exercise area. Fortunately, Council has identified an alternative option Damahiri Park Southeast Corner, which is currently underutilized. It satisfies all the criteria listed here, so really seems ideal. Well, thanks very much for your attention. I hope this helps you make a wise decision, and I'm now happy to answer any questions that you may have. Well, Mr. Sherrick, you have marvelous timing, well done. Um, and thank you. That's really incredibly um, clear and helpful. Councillor Church, um, you have a question. Yeah, thank you. Um, thank you for that. It's a great presentation, very clear. Just thank asking you. that uh, if your um, presentation is going to be submitted as part of your submission, that we get a copy of it. I have sent a copy, uh, which I sent as a backup in case I wasn't okay. able to share screen. So, so that'll be part of our review. Thank you. Uh, Hannah, I think, received it. Yeah, and, and we will see all of those as well. Um, doesn't appear that there's any more questions. I don't think you could have been clearer. Um, so thank you for that. And uh, thank you very much for taking the time and the effort to put in um, your submission and speak to it. Um, we're very, very appreciative. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Have a good afternoon. Thank you. Um, so Ms. Clark, I think that brings us to the end of the um, this particular session. So um, I'm 
proposing that we take a break and resume uh, in time to start at 3.30.